dear viewers in this video we will understand about very important statistical concept confidence interval when we are discussing about sampling sampling techniques this word confidence interval is unavoidable so first we will understand the purpose of sampling then we will also understand what is the role of confidence interval in it and we will also see how to calculate confidence interval for mean so first we will understand about the concept of sampling what is sampling so let us say in my apartment where i live there are 500 people and i wanted to know their average height for some reason i wanted to know their average height can i calculate yes but i need to collect my population count of data points that is capital n whenever you represent capital n statistics it represents number of data points in your population so in my population the total number of data points is 500 if i have time energy resources available to collect all these 500 data points then i can directly calculate the average of my population which would be represented as mu mu is the symbol to represent population parameter which is mean in this case so if i write mu i am talking about population average do i know that i don't know why because i don't have time to collect 500 data points so then what i decided to do i decided to take a subset of my population which is called a sample which is nothing but i pick up some random samples from my population and i decided to collect the height of those individuals and that will be represented as my small n small n in statistics represents number of data points in your sample so i have collected small n which is 50 so from that 50 data points also i can calculate average and when i calculate average from a sample it is represented as x bar x bar in statistics decays average calculated from a sample okay my original objective was to find out average of my population however because i cannot collect my population data i am not able to calculate mu now i have collected my small n which is sample based on my small n i have calculated my x bar now what is this objective of sampling sampling is nothing but if you want to know your mu but you did not collect the population data point then Based on your X bar, you will be able to estimate your mu. The words are very important. We are not going to say exactly this is going to be my mu, but instead I'm going to say my mu will be somewhere, right? So I'm going to write my mu will be somewhere closer to my X bar. How closer to your X bar? So I need to calculate my X bar value. And with my X bar value, there will be something called margin of error. So plus or minus margin of error. So that will be my mu plus or minus margin of error right so what i need to do is i'm going to say margin of error right so for example in this exam in this case my mu is i did i don't know my mu but but my x bar is let us say 134.5 centimeters right then i'm going to say my mu will be 134.5 centimeters plus or minus let us say based on the number of samples i picked up a number of you know uh, uh, or how much will be the standard deviation so based on all that this margin of error will be calculated so let us say in this example my margin of error is two centimeters let's assume how this two centimeter is calculated we will see but as of now we will take an example in in the current scenario the margin of error is centimeters so then what will be your overall confidence interval you can say my mu will be anywhere from 132.5 centimeters to 136.5 centimeters how did i reach this value i calculated my x bar i calculated my margin of error so my mu i'm estimating with a certain amount of confidence that my mu will fall anywhere from 135 centimeters to 136.5 centimeters and how did i calculate it i calculated based on my x bar and margin of error this technique is called estimating population parameter from sample statistics so in this the 132.5 centimeter to 136.5 centimeter is called the confidence interval within which your population average will fall so this is the concept now let's get into the formula and understand how to calculate this margin of error so 
So for that, we will go to a sample data that I've taken here. I have taken the time spent by people to produce one unit using machine A and time spent by people in producing one unit in machine B, right? So in this case, let's take this machine B data as an example. If you see here, I have totally taken 32 data points as my sample. In this machine, I produced 1,000 items, but I did not take all 1,000 items and measure the time. I have taken only 32 items. So let's take 32 as my number of samples, which is small n, right? Okay. Then I need to calculate the standard deviation because if you see this formula, confidence interval is equal to x bar plus or minus z value. I'll explain what is z value. Plus or minus z value multiplied by standard deviation of the sample divided by square root of sample size. So we'll go step by step here. The first thing that I have taken is I have taken what is my number of samples, which is small n. So I can now calculate square root of small n. So square root of small n, which turns out to be 5.65, right? Okay. Now I need to calculate standard deviation. So in Excel, you can use the formula STD EV, and then you can select the data points. So question B, I have selected the data point. So it has given me a standard deviation of 0 0.87. So now I got my standard deviation value. I got my small n. Based on my small n, I have calculated my square root. Now, what is this? When confidence level, when you estimate a population parameter based on sample statistics, you cannot say with 100% confidence that yes, this population average will definitely fall within this interval. And I'm saying this with 100% confidence. If you want to keep on increasing your confidence level and reach all the way up to 100, you will end up collecting a lot of samples, right? So that is why in statistics, we always believe a confidence level of 95%, at least a confidence level of 95% need to be there. So the most statistical decisions are made with the confidence level of 95%. So what you need to do is to understand this Z value, you can go to Google and you can type what is the corresponding confidence level for Z value or corresponding Z value for a confidence level of 95%, right? So 95% confidence level is equal to 1.96. So that is the confidence level for, uh, or that is the Z value for 95% confidence level. You, there is a table available, the Z table, but generally because 95% is the most commonly used confidence level, we know this value is 1.96, but for different confidence level, you can refer to the Z table and take the corresponding value. So now I'm going to write 1.96 as my confidence level. That is corresponding Z value for a 95% confidence level, 1.96, right? Now I need to calculate my X bar. Again, in Excel, you can type average, then you can select your data points. It will calculate the average of your sample. So X bar is called average of your sample. Now we got all the requirements to calculate our confidence interval. So as I told in the previous example, the confidence interval is the interval within which your population parameter is going to fall. So how can I calculate that? First, we will solve this part of the uh, uh, formula, right? So what is this part of the formula says? This part of the formula says Z value multiplied by standard deviation divided by square root of n, right? So what, I, what, what I'm calculating now is called margin of error. So it's called margin of error. So what is confidence interval? Confidence interval is x bar plus or minus margin of error. So what we are going to see, we are going to see the end point one of confidence interval and end point two of confidence interval. So what does that mean? So I'm going to say x bar plus margin of error, x bar, minus margin of error, right? So what I'm trying to explain here is, if you do not know the population average of machine B, but you know the sample average, its standard deviation and number of data points, what you can estimate it in a very simple language, I can say my population standard deviation a population standard deviation is going to fall anywhere between 6.55 to 7.15. So 
So how did I know it is going to fall between 6.15 to 7.55? Because I have calculated my X bar. From X bar, I have calculated my standard deviation also. And based on the standard deviation, I have calculated uh, the margin of error. And once I have calculated the margin of error, I am estimating the population parameter, right? So my X bar is falling somewhere here in the middle, right? My X bar is falling somewhere here in the middle, right? 6.84 is my X bar, right? So 6.84, my X bar. 6.84 is my X bar, right? And my uh, confidence interval could be anywhere from 6.55 to 7.15. So with 95% confidence, I am saying my population average will fall anywhere between 6.55 to 7.15. So this is the process of estimating population parameter from sample statistics, right? Population parameter in this case is average of my population, which is new. Sample statistics in this case is average of my sample, which is X bar. So I'm estimating my mu in terms of X bar with some amount of confidence and with a certain interval. And how did we calculate that interval? We calculated the margin of error, and then we said X bar plus margin of error is 7.15, and X bar minus margin of error is 6.55. So this is how we calculate confidence interval for a mean, for a continuous data, right? So friends, thanks for watching this video. We are also planning to upload more videos related to uh, sampling, sampling technique, and confidence interval. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on this topic. We are also planning to upload a video on how this confidence interval can be easily calculated without so much of statistics in an Excel. If you have a mini tab, how quickly you can calculate confidence interval. So that video also we are planning to upload. So I will add that video link uh, in the end card of this particular video. So you can see that video as well. So if you have a mini tab, that can be done in a very, very easy and simple way. Thanks for your time, friends. See you in another video. Good day.